This is Taparha Beekeeping Wisdom and Pleasure Combined by W.A. Mangum. You can see it's a pretty thick book. It's about an inch thick. 421 pages. Pretty extensive table of contents. It starts off with a brief introduction of what the book will be about. Then a short chapter on how I got into top bar hive beekeeping, which centered around this strange bee that's part male and part female. That's a part worker and part drone bee. Then get into an extensive chapter three on how to construct a top bar hive, starting from choosing the wood at the wood store, so you get good wood to start with. Then plenty of pictures on how to get started. All sorts of how to build a hive, everything you need to know, how to put the hive together, how to assemble the hive, even for a wood floor or a screen floor hive, how to assemble the front, how to put the mouse guards on because mice will get in them, how to put the foundation strips in because that gives you the best straight combs. Plenty of information on that. Then a lot more on how to paint them. How to put the metal shields on because that will keep the combs from collapsing with heat and it will keep all the equipment dry below. And then some more information. A lot more information. Then on all the support equipment you'll need. Nukes feeders for efficiently feeding the hive. Much better than the little jar feeders you see. Queen cages, queen excluders. I use queen excluders quite a bit. They work much better than some of the other stuff. And then more on screen floor hives. Then once you get that done, this chapter four is on establishing a top bar hive. Getting the apiary laid out correctly then establishing the um, package in the hive, getting the queen cage out of the package, preparing that properly, hanging it under the strip, pouring in the bees. Here they are, pictures how to do that properly, get everything set. I've been hiving packages in beehives since I was 10 years old, starting in um, 1980s. I've been doing this procedure in top bar hives since like 1980s. Then getting the cluster around the queen cage, moving up the feeders, getting the bees to feed. So you got a high capacity feeder with plenty of feed right next to that cluster. That's what you want. Then going on, getting the colony in, uh, established with your inspection in three days. New combs, how to handle the combs without tearing them up. Then how to start the colony from a swarm. If you catch a swarm, also, how to start a colony from shaking bees from a frame hive, because you can do that. So you got three ways to start the colony, from a package, from a swarm, from a frame hive. Then getting the colony established, how to handle the combs, because you can flip them upside down. And then how to handle troublesome combs, which is rare, but you need to know how to do it. Then a lot more information, more information. Chapter 5, huge chapter in this book, about a hundred pages, about a hundred photographs on nothing but top bar hive management. It's like a little book in a book. So this starts off with seasonal management starting in the fall because you've just come through basically the spring and summer with your top bar hive from the beginning. What to look for for proper honey and brood organization for the fall. And I have these multiple comb glass hives that we can look inside. There's a cluster. Here I am hefting the hive, weighing them, feeding them, mouse control, other things about mice, proper hive ventilation cluster with the ventilation, with the condensation coming up because it's poorly ventilated. In the winter, first spring inspections, what to look for, anything going wrong, 
robbing problems, even feeding in midwinter. It's a lot of that. And then you get in the spring, swarm control, equalizing colonies. It's like the stuff the frame hive beekeepers do. Um, swarm cells, where to look for them. It's a huge data set I use for top bar hives. Making nukes. Queen cells, some of the good survivor stock to um, limit um, miticides or eliminate miticides comes from good survivor stock, and some of that comes from queen cells, but you got to know how to handle them. So there's a big section on how to handle queen cells. You need natural harvest these natural cells from other colonies. And I park them on these empty cones when I move them around. And then bait highs. These are for catching swarms. Package colonies, uh, package hives cost about $100 now, but I catch a lot of my hives, uh, swarms, in these bait hives. There's a whole section on how to do that. You can save thousands of dollars by having the swarms come right to your bait hives if you know how to do it. Or catch them right on the tailgate of the truck that I've done a couple times. Okay, and then you get into nectar flow, problems with beetles, problems with mass robbing. Uh, queen introduction. Queens are about $20 a piece. Uh, sometimes the bees will kill them on, on, um, when they're introduced. And here's the big second half of this. Um, chapter 5 is on all these special topics and it starts off with queen introduction because they're so expensive now. So you've got to understand how to introduce queens when you requeen. So, and this is all special for top bar hives. So there's queen introduction, Starts off with standard cages, bee behavior for that, more bee behavior for queen introduction, how to do it in uh, homemade queen cages, plenty of that. Store and reserves of combs for better bee management. Moving hives, some other stuff on moving hives. See, we're only about a little over halfway through the book. It's a lot of information. How to hygienically test colonies for American fowl brood and partial um, resistance to varroa. Uh, everybody should know how to do that. And then some more stuff, more stuff, varroa, a lot of stuff on varroa. And then we get all out of that um, to the end of that chapter and we finally get into Can find the right page here. Harvesting honey and wax. There's a detailed chapter on that. How to harvest the honey, what combs to look for, transporting combs of honey. You can um, do cut comb honey, backlit, and put it in a little clamshell. Nice and expensive. Don't have to buy a jar, don't have to buy a honey extractor. Or this shows how to cut and drain all that. And then plenty of big pictures on all this too. And then you can um, crush the comb and separate the honey from the wax to produce liquid honey. That goes quite easily. And there's beekeepers can customize this and do it their own way. But I'm giving you a clean, hygienic, very um, efficient way of doing it to start off with. This would be like your baseline stuff. Then how to prepare those honeycomb sticks that you've cut off, how to prepare them correctly so the bees will rebuild that comb straight. All these combs have to be straight because all combs are interchangeable in my operation just like the frame hive beekeepers. And then there's lots of information here on making sure those combs stay straight. More there and then melting down the wax, some critter pictures with my game cameras. And then this chapter, chapter seven, is on pollination. I moved about 200 hives for crop pollination for about a decade. And all of that information on how to do that is in this chapter. Now you don't have to move some 200 hives, but maybe a few hives for produce farming, which is really big now, and you can make extra revenue, extra money, from top bar hives. There I am doing just a few hives for a pumpkin field. And then all of that is 10 years of experience 
with moving top bar highs for crop pollination. Then there's a chapter on queen rearing. Good stock that was resistant to varroa and other bee diseases comes from resistant stock. And you've got to have control over your stock and that means you need to know how to rear queens. And also you can actually shake package bees from top bar hives. You can make revenue that way. There's a whole chapter there. That's either grafting or non-grafting. There's a non-grafting part in there too. So there's a chapter on that. You may expand into that later on. And even shaking with a sieve box like the package bee producers do. I used to shake a lot of, I used to shake about 70 packages a year from my top bar hives. And then there's a chapter on repairing hives. My hives will last about 20 years, uh, but I do repair them. And then cleaning out the sh little grooves to put in new foundation strips. There's all of that. And then there's a chapter on homegrown hives that's using creative material like sunflower seeds, sunflower stalks to um, build beehives. That's on the web page, by the way. You can look at that. This is all how to do that. And there's a chapter on that. And then there's a chapter on my bee house, my equipment development and my beekeeping development for these hives comes a lot from this bee house where there's 30 glass beehives in this house. They're all top bars so I can study the bee behavior, make sure the bees accept all this. How to build and do all of that is in this chapter. That's chapter 11. And then finally in chapter 12 there's a design for a couple of pollen traps and a plug-on feeder. This feeder plugs onto the front of the hive so you don't have to open the hive to feed the bees. You just take the top off and feed it. It's a good hot weather feeder for fall feeding. Directions for all that are in there. And then there's four appendices. And then there's a nice picture on the back of a commercial apiary with all my top bar highs and my truck parked in there. So, that's the book. Very extensive.